Oh, hey, look, speaking of being on live code, uh, <laughs> you may notice, <laughs> thanks, Al. Um, you may notice Al Capone's cigar is missing. Uh, so some of the excitements of being in development. So let's just get off that screen as quickly as we can and select out. There he is with his air cigar. Oh, there's his cigar. It's reappeared. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another stream from Empire of Sin. Uh, this time we are changing the format a bit. Uh, so this is the first episode of Chicago Chronicles, uh, in which we will try to take over Chicago and build our criminal empire one step at a time. And together with me are... Well, yes. I am Brenda <laughs> Romero. I am the game director. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's all you need to know about me. I mean, there's other things, but that's... <laughs> That's I try to keep those secrets as much as possible. <laughs> and I mean O'Neill, and I'm just happy to be here. All right. Oh, I, I also do combat design. We'll start as Al Capone, and we'll drive you through the tutorial missions today to show you all the base uh, core game mechanics. And later we'll make a, a save, and in the future streams we'll continue from this save. So our goal here is to make sure that you will be able in the end to see also the mid game and late, late game where we already have a big established empire and we are becoming a uh, true kingpins of Chicago. We're getting started. We're getting started. Right. Yep. Yeah, okay. and I should say uh, just this is my my standard uh, standard reminder. Um, we are on live code. So anything can and will happen. Is this going to be a sandbox or more of a campaign story driven game? Is yes an acceptable answer? Yeah, it's kind <laughs> um, of like yes. Yeah, I'll, that, I'll take one North side Scandal. of it. I'll take one side of it, Ian, if you want to take the other side. So yeah, I'll sure. take the. It is. Uh, it is. It does have a campaign. Uh, every single boss that's in the game has their his own his or her own storyline um, that spans over the course of their empire. So uh, and you know they they have run-ins with other bosses as well, and sometimes there's there's interactions there. So there is the campaign aspect of it. And now I will turn it over to my lovely co-host. <laughs> but the rest of it is a sandbox. It's a complete sandbox. Yeah. So when you start off a new game, you are randomly placed into one of the, depending on your game settings, because this is a, a strategy game where you set up your own game. So you'll see it when I go into a new game. I can select how many neighborhoods I want to play in. I can select the number of factions I want to go up against. I can select the number of bosses I want to fight against. So it's really down to you how you want to play your game. So that's the kind of sandbox element. Uh, so yes, every boss does have their own campaign and their own kind of story missions that you will go through and you can go through at your own leisure, but then the rest of the game is all pretty much a sandbox and how you go about it and how you approach situations and how you go about interacting with the different factions is all completely down to you. Oh, hey, look, speaking of being on live code, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you may notice, <laughs> thanks, Al, um, you may notice Al Capone's cigar is missing. Uh, so some of the excitements of being in development. So let's just get off that screen as quickly as we can and select out. There he is with his air cigar. Oh, there's his cigar. It's reappeared. Okay. So right. this is when, when we're talking about you can set up the game. Anyway, you want to set up the game. This is what yeah. we're talking about. So you can you can select how, so if you want a, uh, a nice short game and you only have, you know, a couple of hours or you only have an hour, drop everything down, set it to the low and, you know, Difficulty is up to you, whatever you want to play on. But so, drop the neighborhoods down, drop thing down. For us, this is going to be quite a long campaign process, so this is going to be over the next couple of streams. So what we're going to do is we're going to whack everything up to the max. Awesome. When anybody thinks of Prohibition and the quintessential gangster, it is Al Capone Scarface. Um, so he, uh, I, there's, well, I guess once we get more into the game, it's not just Al, but all the different bosses they have. Um, they have their own individual bonuses in terms of empire uh, and empire bonus things they're good at. They have their own diplomacy bonuses and each one has their own unique combat ability, which uh, Ian will be, you know, Ian's yeah. a good person to discuss that. Or we can just show them what it's like. <laughs> oh, I'll, sh I'll show them. I'll show them. Okay. So like it's, yeah, each boss has, um, so like there, there are talent trees, profession trees, we call them for each of the different classes in the game. And the bosses are kind of an amalgamation of all of the professions, but the bosses also have each each boss, each one of the 14 bosses also has a unique uh, special boss ability as well. So as we get into it, I'll, I'll show off Capone's one okay. and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the design of it as well. Okay. Um, so this, this is also, this is uh, at the start of 1920. So this is also quite a young Capone coming across from New York to Chicago for the very first time. So this is his introduction to the city of okay. Chicago. 
And to introduce him even more, we actually prepared a very short video that is showing him in action. So maybe we can run this right now. Oh, cool. Hello. Carries a box of god awful cigars with his face plastered on him. Don't tell me there's more than one of these guys. Mm. Yeah, it's Frankie. You know where he's staying? No, he didn't say. Okay, yeah, but five I don't people can hear him sound. So, yeah. why no multiplayer mode? Megalomania is asking. Um, because the game is just designed to be a single player game. Uh, I know that that's. Because that's just how that's that's what we how we decided to design it. There's certainly interest from people um, for multiplayer. I would say it's one of the top questions that we get, and I just want to let everybody know we are absolutely hearing those questions. Um, <laughs> just trust that we're hearing them. Also, the, the probably the most recurring question is about the release date. So let me just briefly comment on that. We know that you're asking. Soon. We, we see the comments and we will announce soon. it very soon. So just, just follow us you're, and we'll you're, announce You're just it. getting soon, TM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Gooey Bon Bon, <laughs> that's such a good name. First of all, Ian, I have a question. Yes. When we, the very first, the very first place you open, can you please name it Gooey Bon Bon? Yes, of mm. course. Show me the ropes. We're going to go through the tutorial here. Yep. Welcome All right. Chicago. Let's have a look around. So, I love uh, Sal's voice. I really do. I really like Sal's voice. <laughs> All right. So, Empire of Sin, uh, it is because it's a strategy game, well, be any game really. Uh, you, there is a tutorial, so you'll get an idea uh, just to yeah, just to let Chicago you see um, how we go through it. So, teaching you, well, you know, how to walk around the world, uh, just the basic stuff that you would need to know. I wonder. Oh no, I can't. Everything's okay. Right. We haven't even started. I'm already trying to break the tutorial. <laughs> Please don't. He calls himself the boss of the meat packers. So I've gone into combat here, and as you see, in the start of the game was uh, real time. So you're moving around the neighborhoods, you're moving around the city in real time. Um, the, the, the world clock is ticking away as you're doing that. When you go into combat situations, so like I've done here in this this interior. You, uh, it turns over to turn-based combat. So if you are familiar with other turn-based combat games, such as Wasteland or XCOM or uh, any of the other dozen of them that I'm forgetting, Mario Rabbids, uh, you'll be very familiar and at home with the, with these, with the, the concepts at, uh, at play here. But you can turn on the, the turn-based combat mode at any time, so, right? Yes. So yes. So we call it Ambush. So Ambush is a... It's essentially if you press control, you go into turn-based mode anywhere you want. So now you sometimes you will get ambushed and you will get dragged into fights, which is you know uh, unavoidable. But if the player uh, has the drop on a bunch of enemies, you can press control and you will be able to go into turn-based mode and essentially ambush them. Uh, I'm gonna Ian while you head into um, sure. combat there. I'm gonna answer some of the questions or I'll, I'll address some of the questions that we have here. So uh, Ronzo199 is asking, I have Empire Sin in wishlist. Thank you very much. That is awesome. Any tips on Dean O'Banion? Indeed. So Dean, yeah, we, in fact, you know what? Probably the easiest tip that I have is we did a whole stream on Dean O'Banion. Mm -hmm. uh, so you might want to check out the beginning of that because uh, both, I think it was Katie was on that yep. stream. Yep. So um, uh, there's lots of tips in there. So you might want to check out that previous stream. Um, Chinese food says how replayable are you planning on making the game is it mainly story based or more open world it is both so uh the, each one of the bosses has their own we'll say campaign mission but it is a sandbox game it is it is designed to be incredibly replayable uh, so that is absolutely one of the pillars of the game um epic mark van how about custom bosses maybe at a later date if not shipping with it so we are not uh we aren't shipping with custom bosses in the game right now they're we're shipping with a good collection of them for sure um but suggestions like that custom bosses that sort of stuff the more we hear them every single one of these we're taking note of uh and we appreciate your interest 
Um, <laughs> and now you will I, receive 25 comments, uh, custom you bosses. You know what, though, that's, yeah. that's great. I mean, one of the things that like you, as, as you know, I mean, Ian and I are players as much as we are uh, game designers. Um, and when people, when you hear somebody talk about something, your 25 people say, saying, we want this. Yeah. You, that sort of stuff helps help. You, you, first of all, you know, people are engaged. Secondly, people are doing your job for you. So thank you. And and third, it gives you an idea of what people really want. So I yeah, appreciate it, that. It, it really shows off the passion of the community. Like yeah. uh, we're, we're always blown away with the amount of feedback that we get and the amount of love that we're showing from the community. And one like one of the aspects, it's, it's not part of the tutorial, obviously. But one of the aspects of Empire Sin is its modability. It's highly, highly modable. It's built to mod. Like we have, we've spent a lot of time uh, developing systems and developing modular systems that are f uh, easy and accessible for modders to play around with. So I'm like, and we're we're not going to release customizable bosses or customizable characters, but there is nothing stopping fans going off and customizing characters themselves with mods. So yeah. like, I'm I'm super excited to see what the community does with our game. So this this was the tutorial uh, fight for the initial uh, to take over Ronnie's speakeasy. So his bar. So I've just defeated his guards, and because I've just defeated his guards, this speakeasy is now mine. So the screen, which I should have stopped and shown, behind this was if you take over a racket from either another faction or from a bunch of thugs who are occupying one, you will be able to set that uh, building up whatever way you want. So because this building is a speakeasy at the minute, it's not going to cost me anything to take it over as a speakeasy. But if I wanted to change it into a brewery or a brothel or a casino, it would cost me a fair chunk of change to upgrade it and change it into something else. So as you can see here, this is our racket information panel. So here you can see that each racket, so each racket has its own upgrades as well. There are a few different ones in say the breweries with have production and they have storage for the casinos and the broth, uh, casino, yeah, casinos, brothels and speakeasies. They all have security, deflect, ambience and word of mouth. So security is your guards inside. So better security means you have better uh, guards inside and outside. So like a level five is really quite tough and challenging to take over. Deflect is, so we have the police walking around outside and they are, uh, always oh, what's the name of it suspicion they are always looking for suspicious buildings so they're on the lookout for your rackets and uh, when their suspicion gets high enough for a specific particular building they will end up raiding your racket and they could shut it down they will smash it up you will lose a whole ton of money um, so deflect is really important for lowering the cops to make sure that they to, to make sure that they they don't essentially come after your buildings uh, what were the other two? Ambience, ambience upgrades your the actual speakeasy itself. So it upgrades the look of it, and it upgrades the the quality of the alcohol that's consumed in there. Uh, and what's the last one, Brenda? Well, it brings it. It improves how much people are willing to spend. Higher yeah, class. I can bring up. I can open up the info screen again. Yeah. Word of mouth. Word of mouth is draw. So yeah. that, that's uh, how many people are coming to your racket and spending yeah. money. There is a difference between starting the game with the tutorial and starting the game without the tutorial. So if you start the game and you choose to skip the tutorial, you are given an approximation for the amount of money that you would have been given through the tutorial. So the tutorial will set you up with like speakeasy in the brewery and with your first two gangsters. So your gangsters are your crew members that you hire on to flesh out your crew. So here, two guys have heard about me and heard what I'm doing to Ronnie and have come up to meet me and I'm going to hire them and they're going to join my crew. But if the outside the tour, uh, tutorial, if you were to skip it, you would be given enough money to hire two uh, low level gangsters yourself of your own choosing from the gangster screen, which we will show off via the black book in a while. So yes. I'm just going to hire these two here. So one is Hugh Miller who is an excellent enforcer. I see um, Surgeon, Surgeon Gamer General, it sounds very important, wants to know how big the map is. Uh, so we, you actually will be, you'll be seeing the map here in just a second. Each, there, each neighborhood is, uh, there are a number of extremely large neighborhoods, there are small neighborhoods, and there are medium neighborhoods. They are massive. Yeah. But even a small one feels massive. So, so I, I think, oh. sorry, I think even the, the largest map has about 40-ish rackets in it. Yeah. If, if I remember, I, I haven't counted recently. But well, there are also good. some differences between different neighborhoods, right? This, uh, yeah. like the Chinatown, for example, is very much different from the harbor districts, right? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And and neighbor individual neighborhoods have their own bonuses. And in fact, I'm sort of jumping, you sort of jumping the gun here, but 
Um, you can actually, in, in your own individual neighborhoods, you can actually get synergies, like two of a kind, three of a kind, like just in terms of your um, uh, the rackets that you get. And those rackets sort of power up the earnings that you have. And then when you add a hotel, uh, then because hotels bring, bring more people into your neighborhood, you really start to ramp up the earning power of your businesses. We've never really shown off the talent trees too much in any of the previous streams. We've never really uh, delved into them. I was mm -hmm. going to use this for a very kind of brief thing. And, and in the coming weeks, if I am here, if they allow me to come back, I will go through them even further in more depth. But I'm, I'm just going to give a very brief overview. So as I mentioned previously, when we're selecting our bosses, each boss has their own talent tree. You start with your boss ability unlocked because we wanted to make sure that players were able to use that ability from the get-go because they're really, really powerful. They're, they're super overpowered abilities, but they're a lot of fun to use. Yeah, so they, yeah. do, they, they can make the start of the game a bit easier, but it also means that you get to the, the mid and the late game sections much quicker. And now, let's not forget you're playing against people. Who also so you are, you, have these abilities, yeah. right? So when, when you go up against a boss, they're going to use their ability against you. Uh, and you are like the, the higher tier of enemies as, as well also have abilities and will use them against you and items and grenades and a whole bunch of other stuff. The talent trees are liable to change because I'm in the process of balancing them and making sure that abilities are, and passives are where I want them to be. And uh, values inside those abilities will also change because that's actually what I'm working on right now. So the first tier are, are, is your boss ability, so tier one. Tier two is the... Do I want to look after myself or do I want to look after my crew tier? So this is, so if we look at Survivor, Survivor is a boss only passive and it is a case of, so we, we have a concept called overkill in combat in Emperor's Sin. So if your health is low and you take a whack of damage, it is going to kill you and you are going to skip past the bleed out. So what Survivor does is it means that you will always bleed out regardless of how much, it basically nullifies overkill. Uh, so this is, am I selfish? Do I want to look after myself rather than my crew? We have Lightfooted, which will allow you to essentially not trigger Overwatch cones, which is super useful, especially if you are a mobile boss with a mobile boss ability that makes you run around and do stuff, such as Frankie. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have Lifeline, and Lifeline, so Lifeline actually comes from the Mob Doctor tree. So this is, so your boss is a boss, and that means that they have access to all of the talents from all of the trees. So again, this goes back to mod ability. So mm. if people want to change around the talent trees later on at a later point themselves with a mod, it's very easily done. And they can, they can do whatever they want with, to their heart's desire using mods. So anyway, so Lifeline is a, I care more about my crew rather than myself. I am going to protect my crew. So I am going to, uh, I'm going to select Lifeline because I care about my crew. Oh, good man. I really don't. So again, the enforcer, your enforcer is your tank. So your enforcer is quite tough, quite heavy. So you have something like draw fire, which is your taunt. So this will taunt anybody around you to attack you, but it also gives you a defensive bonus, which means that you're going to, or uh, not a defensive bonus, it gives you a damage resistance bonus, so it means you're going to take less damage. So, and then we have suppressing fire. Suppressing fire is you're going to reduce the chance to hit of whoever you're suppressing, and if they move, you're going to get a free overwatch shot on them. Um, so you're, the enforcer can go one of two ways. The enforcer can go uh, this down this kind of mm -hmm. overwatch expert uh, path, or they can go down the more tanky resistance protect the crew path. So again, I'm going to go down the more tanky resistance protect the crew path. The tanky path, as we like to call it. The tanky path. And then your hired guns. Your hired guns are just your general uh, all-round damage dealers. They are exceptional at basically anything got to do with a gun. They, they have some of the highest marksmanship values in the game. They have access to the, the better quality of weapons in the game. They have access to the better, uh, not quality, uh, the better tier of weapons in the game. Mm -hmm. And they have some just really good direct damage abilities. So they're, they're excellent at piling on your damage. But they can be a little bit fragile. So their health can be quite, quite a bit oh, lower. How dare you suggest Maria? I know, if I you've know. been on this stream before, you know Maria is one of my favorites. So Maria, I mean, Maria has a has a trait called hair trigger. Wherever it is, she does Angry. indeed. Where is it? It's right. I, look at me. I'm about to point at the screen like that's going to be helpful. <laughs> hair trigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so hair trigger. Hair trigger is uh, a chance for the character to lose their temper and go insane and murder everybody. She's so fantastic when she does it's, that. It's useful. Um, so, because Maria is equipped with a Tommy gun, and starts with a Tommy gun, or, yeah. sorry, not a Tommy gun, MP18 submachine gun, I'm going to choose sweep. So sweep is a AOE uh, sweep with with a machine gun, and it can only be used with a submachine gun or a uh, uh, light machine gun. Okay, so that's that's a, that's a very very brief 
overview and as we play over the next couple weeks i'm gonna go i'm gonna delve down into those abilities deeper he has an mp18 he has a shotgun so that's pretty good and he has i don't think the pistol is any better than so, uh, so these are different colors of the of the weapons i understand that they're different yeah, so our, tiers of rarity right our loot and our equipment is it follows the more so this is the the kind of rpg aspect of empire sin so empire sin is kind of a little bit of an rpg with a little bit of turn-based uh, strategy with a little bit of grand strategy and this is one of the rpg kind of elements so our loot our, our you know our weapons and our equipment mm -hmm. and our trinkets and our body armor and everything else in the game follows the the kind of rpg uh, colored tier list so from uh, uncommon through to rare, epic, legendary, and then you have a couple of uniques which are pink. And the uniques are the really cool, kind of interesting weapons that you will find out in the world, and they're typically reserved for other bosses. So maybe if you kill another boss, you might see some of those special items. Yeah, also Empire of Sin is uh, a bit more about management and building your own empire as well. So it's yeah. a different kind so of like well, yeah, overall. In management, not just of your empire, but also of your gangsters. Because you're trying to build a crew of people. You may have seen, like, on that screen, there's people, you know, with middle fingers, or they're in love with somebody, or they're friends with somebody. So it's it's organizing all that as well. So there are uh, personal relationships between gangsters as well, as you mentioned. So if they hate yeah. each other, they will react differently to certain actions. Yeah, so let's, actions. let's have a little bit of a look at... Um... At the black book, I forgot the name of it there for a second. So let's let's look at Hugh. So we can actually see somebody hates you. So Bruno Baldini will not work with you, mm -hmm. but Ray Monks won't work with Bruno Baldini. Whereas Bruno Baldini loves Maria. So there's there's a, a a love triangle straight away that you are going to get weirdly involved in. So if you still have Hugh and Maria, he'll he'll work with you because he loves Maria, but he won't work with Hugh because he, he doesn't want to be anywhere near him. So he'll flat out refuse to join your crew. Maybe and, he might have an exception. And these relationships also develop dynamically uh, over time. So um, the guys with clocks on their faces, they're actually away at the minute. Yeah. They're, they're being employed by other people. Yeah. Okay. So does it mean that uh, if other gangsters are also higher bill, but by other bosses, so it's possible that the love interest of our gangster will be serving another boss and sooner or later will probably be in a fight with them. So Absolutely. how this will work then? Um, not in your favor, usually. Uh, I mean, it's sort of like if you imagine if you, well, this could be a loaded question, but you know, if you come up against, if you came up against your friend in a fight, like, what are you going to do? Right? Mm. Like, so um, they can flat out refuse, they can quit. Um, you know, there's a, there's a variety of different ways that that, that can go. Uh, let's right. see. Let's, are gonna let's be take this brewery. Yeah, do it. Um, are there going to be other cities or states to play in? I know San Fran was a big location for Prohibition. So Empire of Sin, the launch game anyway, is set in Chicago. Oh. We, um, but you are right that Prohibition, Prohibition. there's some great stories all around the U.S., actually even outside of the U.S., because that's where the alcohol comes from. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, gooey Bon Bon. I think we should just, we should, we could change the name of the game to Gooey Bon Bon at this point. <laughs> Gooey Bon Bon, can the AI change establishments when they take it over as well? Yeah, mm. the AI, whatever you can do, the AI can do. Yeah. Um, that is, uh, yeah, the, it, that is one of the things. Um, so I'm going to trigger off Capone's uh, rain fire ability. So this, this is Capone's possibility. So rain fire is a uh, cone AOE uh, Tommy gun attack. So the, the possibilities generally have their own unique we weapons attached to them. That's to help with balance, because believe me, we tried to do it where you could equip whatever weapon you wanted, and it was an absolute freaking nightmare. So Capone has the iconic Tommy gun because that is Capone. So like when I was designing these and going back and gathering reference, like if you watch any gangster movie with Capone or any TV show or reference anything with Capone, it's the Tommy gun. It is, it is so, so iconic. And then the spray of having Capone with the Tommy gun swaying from side to side. So I knew straight away that's, that's what it had to be. That's what Capone's ability had to be. And then there's the layering. So then comes the, okay, so it's a, it's a sweep attack that covers an area and damages everybody in it. Cool. That's the basics. What do you do for it? So suppression. So the next bit is we take the hey, suppression Ian, effect. Yeah. I got a question for you. What's going on with Capone? That's the possibility. That's rain of fire. Yeah, because still? he's still yeah, covering that, that can, it continues he continues yeah. spraying the area until the the ability ends so it's on a it's on a it's, it goes for a round 
Okay. So he, he will just continue doing that until I finish my round. But there's also another element. So those guys now have reduced chance to hit. So Capone is, is quite well protected while he is suppressing an enemy. And then the next part is there's also an overwatch built into it. So anybody who moves in or out of that or inside the cone internally is going to get hit. So there, it's a massive amount of fuck you to whoever gets trapped in it. Let's see uh, what other questions. Oh, there we go. What? So we literally we had an enemy move oh, okay. into it, got suppressed, took damage. Okay, and this guy is just calmly, you know, reloading. Reloading okay. while he's <laughs> under fire. That's fine. That's totally fine. Nerves of steel. So oh, it, can, it damages oh, friendly as well. Yourself as well. So wow, are you, okay. it, yeah. So friendly fire is a massive thing in Empire Sin. So if you cross over into each other's, you know, uh, AOE attacks, into their explosions, into their shotgun blasts. You are going to damage your friendlies, and they don't always appreciate it. Okay, and there is also uh, so now she fuel, suppressed. Right? She only has eight percent chance to hit. I'm not going to hit him, and yeah. I've taken off half her health. So that's that's the end of rain fire. Here's a more serious question for you. As someone who loves turn-based strategy in general, I feel we're in a bit of a golden era for these types of games. Uh, do you feel that uh, that this hinders your game if there's too many similar titles? it has to compete with, or do you feel like the more accessible titles will benefit you with a bigger audience looking for in-depth tactical experience? You know, I, I honestly, I think it's Empire of Sin, you know, it, it stands on its own. There's, there are not, um, I don't feel like we're in big competition with the five other um, uh, Prohibition era strategy games, because there aren't any. Hmm. But that said, like the fact that there, that there are some great uh, turn-based tactical strategy games coming. I love playing them. So, you know, the more the merrier. Um, I mean, if anything, probably the biggest strategy game that, that scares me is one, I don't know if you've heard of it, Machi, but Crusader Kings 3. <laughs> I've um, heard about this one. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, the, the giant sucking sound of all strategy players, you know, heading to CK3. Um, uh, like, me even, oh my god. CK3, I, I don't want to say that it has affected the development of of empire of sin but like it's the classic thing it's like well you know i'm just gonna play a little bit you know mm -hmm, and then it's mm -hmm. you know freaking four o'clock in the morning <laughs> um, but anyway casey i think it's i think it's great you know i'm right with you in terms of that being one of my favorite styles of games um let's see uh mdm stat u47 is there going to be a second session of playthrough Absolutely. this the playthrough that you're seeing um unless ian miraculously wins <laughs> uh, then we are there will which he's not going to and I have every faith in Ian but I know that's not this short of a game um, so uh, so yeah there's going to be a second third fourth playthrough we're going to try to see we're going to try to get to the end and become well since we're playing Capone we're going to become king of Chicago fuck you Ronnie <laughs> uh, so that what you Ronnie. saw there <laughs> what you just saw there that was a um, that was a sit down. So sit downs are usually pretty tense moments. Uh, uh, all right, so Ian's going to show. Can I get the two of them? This is a stupid maneuver. And this, this is how to... we die all the time. No, yeah, don't. I can't get, can't get both of them. <laughs> okay, because we can't, we can't actually die. No, uh, we're not going to die. We'll be fine. Be grand. I know we will be fine. I trust you. <laughs> Ian, I always have trust in you. Go on, run into it. Yeah, there nice. we go. Okay, let's see. Wouldn't it be better in terms of customizing your gang that every soldier you can recruit starts at the same level and you can level them up so you don't end up being somehow forced to purchase the same elite soldiers in the late game? So an interesting thing is that those elite soldiers won't necessarily work with you um, when you're just starting out. Uh, and so basically you are, you've are you just arrived, like in the case of Frankie Donovan, like he's more or less fresh off the boat. Uh, and so, good job. Oh, there's, e there's, there's Maria. Hair this is why Maria is fantastic. Um, if she survives. If she, if, uh, Ian. No, I <laughs> Be <help>. positive. <laughs> I'm always positive. I'm Mr. Positive. Nice. <laughs> positive. She's positive. She's going to survive. I hope. Um, uh, so let's see. When in the late game, you don't. In, in fact, I should say you don't always have to wait until the late game. <laughs> Um, because those, uh, those, sorry, that was just particularly <laughs> gross. Um, those bosses, uh, or those characters, the gangsters, uh, if you're working with somebody that they work with, like for instance, I happen to know one of my favorite characters, one of my favorite gangsters are, they have a soft spot for a tier one gangster. 
So if you if you do well by that tier one gangster, there is possibility that R will work for you, and R is deadly. Oh, so fancy. let's uh, uh, let's see fur shark. I'm absolutely destroying the pronunciation of that. Um, why don't you try that, Maji? Uh, which one? Sorry. How it's the yeah, fur shark. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so can you just kill people or attack places without police problems? No. I mean, you know, if if you're inside of a gangster's safe house, like you basically so here's here's how it affects your your empire. So let's just say uh, so Ian's creating all kinds of issues here. The, the, in, we're still in the tutorial at this point. Ian's creating all kinds of issues, but let's just say we're in a more advanced game. Funny. So <laughs> Ian's got a bunch of businesses in a neighborhood. Things are going well. He's making a lot of money in that neighborhood. Somebody will say Ronnie O'Neill, back from the dead, comes into the neighborhood to give all, Ian all kinds of trouble. If there's a lot of gunfights, that's going to make people understandably nervous, um, and they're not going to be happy about that. So what will happen as a result of that is um, is it will actually reduce spending. It will affect the prosperity of the neighborhood. It will affect all kinds of things that affect your empire. Also, the cops can get involved. People can get arrested. They can get jailed. You know, all kinds of stuff can go on. So you can't. It's you. You have to be. You have to be smart about the way you're doing that. Uh, let's see. I see uh, somebody just in our Come internal here, chat here. CK3 producer's nightmare. Where's the team? <laughs> Quote, researching in CK3. <laughs> you know, it's your own fault, Paradox. I, you know, <laughs> I, but I do want to say, like, congrats to the CK3 team. Uh, yeah. You know, geez, what a launch, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that uh, the game is quite a blast, but uh, yeah. I'm also curious how, how this will develop, because I see that you're struggling, you know, Ian. How is it going? Why no, I'm fine. I'm grand. Yeah. Things are going well. Let's see. I'm, trying, I'm trying to keep people alive. But usually the, when you're uh, assaulting the enemy safe house, it's much harder battle than normal. Yeah. Uh, so again, raids, this, right? this, you know, just to make sure people yeah. are aware, this is the tutorial. This is the end of the tutorial. We're literally in the last fight. So it is, it's, a, it's a tougher fight to, you know, bring people into. The actual game uh, but if you assault a safe house in the actual game by god you better bring a good crew with good equipment and you know well kitted out with talents yeah. because it is a slog <laughs> i'm only laughing because the first time i was like you know what i got a great gameplay strategy screw all these rackets i'm gonna go straight for the safe houses wow was that a short game yeah <laughs> it's an unbelievably short game okay pretty close getting oh, there so close yeah Oh, now we should be able to finish it. Nothing uh, is certain in this game. Yeah, <laughs> see, see, who okay, jinxed it? I'm not it, saying huh? anything. I'm not saying anything now. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're almost there. Okay. I'm right, gonna trigger his Overwatch. Oh, I can't shoot through Maria. Err. I'm gonna trigger his Overwatch anyway. I'm gonna eat it. Ouch. It's the end of it. Fuck you, Ronnie. Yay. <laughs> so we made it. <laughs> and he's going to get fucking executed as well because he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to end it. Yeah. <laughs> and you Fuck you, Ronnie. And you got a nice vest. <laughs> and I got right, his vest. So, oh. Ian, wait, don't yes. get rid of that. So this is a key thing. When you take over somebody else's empire, this is why you do crazy things like go for people's safe houses. You get every single business that they have opened. You inherit so, their empire. Yeah, so my strategy was sound in terms of my desire um, in that I wanted all this stuff. But it was uh, it was not very good because I got slaughtered. Um, Congratulations, you got your first safe house. Let's see. Defended. So you got your first safe house. Safe houses like give you benefits when you're in them, but as the tutorial is telling you, I don't need to tell you. To do the leg work, but eventually you'll get an underboss to do your bidding while you come Okay. In the meantime, we had a couple of questions about the music. Uh, is the soundtrack in Empire Scene original work or something that it, we took from the era? And no, it is absolutely uh, original work. Um, 
Yeah, so it is original. We have a couple of composers on it. Um, so there's Tommy Buckley uh, as well as Dan Policar. So I think this is a, a good wrap up because we basically finished the tutorial. Uh, in fact, so going forward from from this, we'll probably between between the streams just conquer a couple of rockets to you know expand our empire a bit and start from this point on. And yep. then we'll uh, also present you the new bosses, new game mechanics, and we'll go forward conquering the, the, the Chicago as Al Capone. Uh, that sounds like a kick-ass plan. <laughs> yep. really and in like the meantime, it. we will, of course, file our taxes on the income that we've earned. <laughs> yeah. As Al Capone. The, <laughs> this special... I'm going to do that right away. Yeah, right after fastest... the stream. Can you imagine trying to pitch a taxes DLC? <laughs> Me. That oh, would God. die. That would just be the first. That would. Uh, let's just kill it right now. Um, <laughs> all right. So wait. Like yeah. When we come back, we'll just keep playing for just a little bit. Get our empire just a little bit going. We'll get at least one racket. Gooey bonbon. You will not be disappointed. Come back. You will have a building named after you. Um, and and then we'll play on from there. So we survived the tutorial. Good job, Ian. That would have been yeah. shameful if we died in the tutorial. Can you imagine? Go me. Okay.